Hello students, in your 11th grade physical education, you had learned why psychology is important uh, when it comes to sports or physical education. Uh, and considering the same importance, we are going to explore some concepts this year also. So some psychological concepts like motivation, how people learn, um, stress management, anxiety management, these concepts are equally important in sports as much as your physical education uh, because they help in excelling the performance. So whether you are uh, a sports person or whether you are a coach or whether you are working with any sports team uh, it becomes very important to understand these concepts so that you can help a sports person help your team in order to excel their performance uh, because only with only physical work and hard work uh, it becomes very difficult to maintain your success and achieve success if you have psychological understanding and psychological uh, efforts along with that then it becomes easier so that's why we are going to um, look at uh, some psychological concepts. Uh, they are concepts like personality, motivation. We are also going to explore some strategies for enhancing adherence to exercise. And we are also going to look at aggression in sports. So let's begin by understanding the first concept which is personality. Uh, now when we talk about personality, it, it is basically... Uh, set of characteristics that a person has and these characteristics influences how we think how i uh, feel or how i behave uh, what motivates me what doesn't motivate me um, so we must we do use this concept or the this word a lot of time when we are actually uh, talking in day-to-day -day life we say that his personality is very aggressive so which means that that person is very dominant in nature or he immediately gets angry or he shouts when he is talking right so the or we say that his personality is very shy which means that he doesn't talk much or uh, he starts um, crying may be easily so these are the factors which are determined by what is your personality uh, now different authors have tried to define personality as per their own understanding and not any single definition can define um, personality completely so it's uh, but understanding different definitions can help us to understanding different aspects of personality. So uh, read all the definitions which are given in the book um, and they all are equally important but you can by heart a couple of them from the exam point of view. So uh, all port have defined personality as a dynamic organization of those psychophysical systems that determine an individual's adjustment to his environment. Environment. So it means that these are the characteristics both physical and psychological which define how we are going to deal with our environment, how we behave with people, how we tackle our problem, uh, how we work etc etc. Uh, then I think uh, define personality as the sum total of actual or potential behavior patterns of the organism. Uh, so according to him, it's not actually just what characteristics you have, but the potential to possess some characteristics also. For example, right now I may not be very ambitious, but I have that um, capacity in me that I can set very high goals so then that is also part of my personality uh, and moon uh, define personality as the uh, characteristic integration of an individual structure mode of interest attitudes behaviors capacities abilities and aptitude so as I mentioned that personality is not any one factor it's a combination if you see all the definitions all will be talking about a integration or organization or set of characteristics it's not one thing it is it is combined thing with your interest your attitudes your emotions behaviors etc etc um, so uh, and that defines what kind of person we are that separates us from the other people so as you can see that all the authors are talking about a combination of things right so let's try and understand what are these dimensions of personality which combine to form our personality 
um, these dimensions come together to make the personality of individual and these dimensions are interrelated and not one dimension can be completely understood without the reference of the other dimension so it cannot happen that you are if you want to understand the personality of any one person you are only focusing on one dimension if that is done then you will not be able to understand that person's complete personality in order to understand the complete personality you need to take into consideration all the dimensions so um, there are four dimensions to personality uh, one is physical mental social and emotional now physical dimension is the first one which we look at which is the appearance physique health posture facial expressions of that particular person um, and most of the time we do judge people on the basis of just this one dimension if we see a very uh, tidy and prim and proper well dressed person we feel that okay this person will be confident he will be knowledgeable and if we see if we see a shabby person we assume that that person may not be that much knowledgeable or may not know his or her job properly right but uh, and though yes it does important because as we also say that first impression is the last impression we also need to understand that that is not the complete personality that is the one aspect of personality uh the second dimension of personality is mental which uh, basically consists of your mental and intellectual strengths like how well you think how well you can reason um how what is your problem solving style etc uh the third dimension of personality is social which means this this dimension consists of things like what are your values what are your morals are you kind enough uh, do you cooperate with other people what are your ethics what do you believe on uh, and last one is emotional uh, emotional so this basically talks about emotional stability how well you can um, manage your emotions how well you can express them you can understand them um, that is a fourth aspect or fourth dimension of personality different psychologists have tried to divide personality on the basis of different aspects so the first one is type a type b uh, theory so in this according to this theory there are four types of personality type a b c d now type a are the people who are very competitive who are ambitious who want to set goals they are also very self critical they will um, view and criticize their own progress very objectively uh, and they are highly involved in their work and as i said they are very ambitious but this can also lead to lot of stress related problems in them then the second type is type b uh, these are more of a easy going friendly and patient people uh, they can ex express their emotions appropriately and that's why they can also manage them uh, pretty well so they can balance their work and life and they can also balance have balanced emotions uh the next one is type c uh these are very pleasing nature and passive they will do whatever you will ask to do they will usually not prefer to go against what others are saying and in order to do that they mostly suppress their emotions so these are the people who are more toward shy or they will agree to whatever you will ask them to do um and they can have some anxiety related concerns uh, and the last type is type b so these are the people who are mostly distressed they fear a uh, rejection they fear that people will not like them uh, and uh, they also high, have a high risk of depression so this is a one theory which divides personality into four types uh the next theory is given by uh, sheldon and he have classified personality on the basis of physicality of the person so on the basis of physicality of the person he divide personality into three aspects endomorph mesomorph and ectomorph so endomorph is basic are the basically people who fall in this category they have a very rounded physique uh, and they look short they have short arms and legs and uh, uh they have a tendency to gain weight very fast because their metabolism is uh, low uh, and that is why these kind of people are suitable for sports which require weight so for example weight lifting uh, can be uh, a sports which is suitable for these uh, category of people the second type is mesomorph now these are the 
if you can say ideal sports personality then these could be th th uh, this could be that one uh, these are the people who are muscular they have athletic physique they have thick bones and muscles and um they have a good energy uh, and they are suitable for any sports because they have that athletic ability and uh, physique uh, with them uh, and the last one is ectomorph so these are the people who are very slim and uh, tall in physique they have quick metabolism so they lose gain very fast and they are very uh, in a way fragile uh, or they can they have a light weight they have a they can lose their weight also quickly so these are the people who are suitable for gymnastic kind of activities uh, so these are the three types of personality given by uh, sheldon now next classification is given by jung uh, now he this is a very popular and well known classification of personality uh, in general terms also if you ask people what kind of person you are we use these terms introvert extrovert to define ourselves or to describe ourselves right so jung classify personalities into three uh, aspects they are introvert extrovert and ambivert so introvert are people basically who are shy they talk less they prefer being in their own company uh, they are self centered uh, they are sensitive um, but they uh, can also be very focused in terms of their work uh, the second is uh, extrovert now these are the people who are very friendly outgoing they love to talk they like other people's company they are very supportive they they uh, can easily cooperate with other people uh, they are also tend to act quickly and take uh, decisions very quickly because uh, they also tend to be uh, confident and energetic and the last one is ambi ambivert now uh, basically ambivert is a combination of introvert and extrovert qualities and if you see overall uh, people around us or if you see yourself also uh, very rarely you find people who are completely introvert or uh, who are completely extrovert we find people most of the time who fall under uh, ambivert category who have some introvert co uh, qualities and some extrovert qualities and that's why most of the people fall under the ambivert uh, categories but they don't have any specific it's not actually a, a different third type it's a combination of introvert and extrovert and the last theory of personality is called big five personality theory now this is also again very popular and very well researched and used personality theory uh, in all the psychology related fields so according to this uh theory personality is has five domains so combining these five domains a personality is made uh, and these are not a uh, types so for example when we saw uh, jung's classification you can either or any person can either fall in introvert or extrovert category or ambivert category so these five factors are not categories they are factors so it won't be that you fall under openness and you don't fall under extroversion it's not like that uh, these five uh, factors are seen as uh factors that you have so you may have one factor which is higher and one factor which is less in your personality so for example i may be high on openness um high on consciousness low on extroversion um medium on agreeableness and extremely low on neuroticism so that will define my personality so this is how this theory is looked now in openness what it's seen is how open you are to learning or uh, your creativity your imagination uh then in consciousness it's more about your sense of uh, right and wrong so uh, people who are high on consciousness are reliable they are very systematic organized people uh, extroversion is basically how you get your energy from so people who are high on extroversion they get their energy from social interactions from interacting with people whereas people who are low on extroversion they get their energy from themselves or being alone um this is similar to the jung's classification but don't get confused between uh, 
this factor under big five personality and the three types which jung have given in his classification uh, the next factor in big five personality is uh, agreeableness so people who are high on agreeableness are very friendly they are cooperative they are kind they will try to agree with whatever you are saying uh, and uh, people who are low on that will be uh, opposite of that so, so they might be self-centered they might not very willing to cooperate uh, and things like that and the last one neuroticism means emotional um, stability or instability so people who are high on neuroticism uh, have emotional instability so they are not very uh, stable emotionally and people who are low on neuroticism they are emotionally stable and they can function well they it doesn't affect their their emotions doesn't affect their uh, productivity or their day-to-day -day functioning so combining these five factors a personality analysis is made according to this theory the next concept that we are going to explore is motivation and as you can guess this is a very important concept uh, when it comes to sports because uh, if you are if a sport person is motivated he or she can perform and excel in his or her own sport uh, so the term motivation is derived from the word called motive which is basically a combination of thoughts feelings and condition that causes one to act so it's like a purpose and uh, motivation is the determinant of an individual's behavior so motivation decides whether you are going to do it or not or how you are going to do it um, this is a as i said this is a important factor psychological factor that affects performance other than the other physiological uh, factors that help to uh, improve or it affects the performance motivation is basically the inclination to pursue and persist in activities related to one sport uh, again like uh, personality there are different authors who have defined motivation in their uh, own way and um, it is important to read all the definitions and also understand it B uh, from exam point of view you can focus or by heart couple of them so uh, crooks and stain have defined motivation as any condition that might energize uh, and direct our uh, actions towards it uh, a sage has de defined it that the drive to strive is called motivation so whatever force which is driving you to actually strive in whatever you are doing is is motivation uh, and adeltman uh, has defined motivation as it is a general level of arousal to um, action so that the person can act in uh, in his or her own way so these are couple of uh, definitions which can be understood uh, of motivation but to explain in very simple and basic term motivation is basically um, the force or the um, energy source behind uh, your actions so something which motivates you which triggers you to do whatever you are doing that is uh, motivation now there are two types of motivation one is intrinsic motivation and second is extrinsic motivation uh, these are also as simple as the word such as intrinsic motivation means um, the factors which are internal th that motivate you for example if you are doing a particular thing so that because you get pleasure out of it uh, you know the importance of it or you have a desire to excel in that particular sports uh, then you are uh, getting intrinsic motivation then you are uh, getting motivation by intrinsic factors whereas if you are doing a particular sport because you want rewards because you want to win that particular competition um, you want praise uh, that other people are um, giving you or because someone blamed you that you cannot do it and in order to prove that you are uh, doing that sport so uh, all these things are external they are not coming from you but 
they are from outside sources so that type of motivation is called extrinsic motivation so these are two types of motivation intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation uh, extrinsic motivation acts very quickly uh, but there is also a risk of it dying down um, after some time like uh, i do it for reward but maybe after i get reward i don't have motivation whereas intrinsic motivation it doesn't immediately motivate you but there is a chance that it will stay longer because you are not doing it for any external reasons you are doing it for all the uh, intrinsic reasons so these are the two types of uh, motivation now there are different uh techniques by which we can increase the motivation of someone uh the first one is goal setting unless and until you don't have a goal uh you will not feel motivated to do anything if i don't know where i have to go um i will not try to find out different ways i will not take efforts for that but if i know where i have to reach uh, i'll be automatically on the track and it will help me to do that particular thing uh with sportsman other things that uh, can motivate are uh, elaborate arrangements of competition if i am competing let's say for uh, commonwealth games or olympics the arrangements the um, prestige of that competition the overall uh, um, media coverage of that competition all these things will automatically uh, motivate me rather than if i'm competing for let's say any local competition so um elaborate arrangements of competition spectators if i have a lot of people cheering for me then that obviously motivates me uh, similarly verbal comments they uh, can increase motivation if they are used at the correct time um if you have seen the movie chak de india the last speech that uh, sharukh khan gave to the uh, to the girls team um because it, it, they all know the, all these things right but it was said just before they competition where your um, your drive is already high and in order to take it little more higher those verbal comments or those words of motivation helps um some people also believe that hypnotism can also help but this is not uh, at the time of competition this is otherwise overall to increase your motivation maybe some hypnosis sessions can help but it's very important that it has to be taken by a trained person uh, anyone cannot do these sessions another thing that motivates sports people are healthy sports environment so again as i mentioned just like competition if you are playing in a good climate the climate is good the weather is good uh, the field the equipments are uh, really nice you are playing in a good condition so all these things can help to improve the motivation um knowing the results it doesn't mean what we, what is going to be the uh, end result or it's not like match fixing but knowing where what is your progress imagine when you are playing cricket and you don't know what the score is you don't know how many runs you need to win that match and how many uh, balls um it would be very like shooting in the dark uh, but if you know your progress it will automatically motivate you to perform better um similarly praise or blame both the things can work wonders when it comes to motivating a sports person and uh, the coach or the team leaders have to decide or captains have to decide which one to use um, when also and with what personality also for example uh, some people if you blame them if you tell them that you cannot do anything uh, they will get angry and in order to prove wrong they might perform better but some people might get just disappointed with your words and they will not do be able to do uh, which they were otherwise also doing also so uh, praise and blame has to be similarly too much praise also can spoil some people whereas for some people it can actually be motivating so uh, when to use praise when to use blame and who what to be used for whom uh, that decision has to be taken very carefully um then some materialistic things like cash prize certificates trophies they are also good intensives and as i said like extrinsic motivation these extrinsic factors can definitely help in increasing the motivation uh some motivational music lot of sports people listen to this song or even if you see uh, there are some hindi songs like 
like chak de or like uh, maybe some songs from bhag mil kha bhag or uh, even as simple as hum honge kaam hai ab when you listen to this song you automatically feel energetic and you automatically feel motivated so these kind of music can help specially in training to maintain and to persist your efforts these kind of music can be helpful having positive attitude and using positive self talk both of these things are very important because if you are constantly though you need to be aware of your reality uh, if you are constantly thinking negative things uh, that is not going to help in your performance so if you are believing on yourself if you are using telling yourself that i can do this um, i can achieve this uh, then that also will be a very good motivating factor so these are some of the techniques that can be uh, used in order to motivate the sports person next we are going to understand some strategies for enhancing adherence to exercise so all of us know how important exercise is um, in terms of sports but only doing exercise is not important but adhering to it and doing it regularly is equally important rather only if you do it uh, regularly then only you can get the benefits so let's look at some strategies which can help in order to enhance this regularity and adherence to the exercise um some simple things that we need to remember when it comes to exercises start with the simple exercise don't start with only uh, something which is very challenging for you because then you will get demotivated and you will get frustrated uh, so start with simple things uh and do keep have variety in exercise so if you are doing same thing every day initially it can get boring so that's why uh have variety and start with simple things uh similarly it's better if you exercise uh in morning because you have energy you have um your mind is fresh the air is fresh so it's better if you can uh, exercise in the morning um concentrate on yourself when you are doing exercise think that um or let the person think that he or she is doing for himself or herself because when you concentrate on yourself rather than some other factors around you um the chances of it increasing uh, chances of you doing exercise regularly increases uh, similarly set appropriate goals for your exercise so if initially only you say that i will exercise 2 hours that may not be realistic but if you start with 15 minutes or uh, 20 minutes then that is more feasible so set appropriate goals uh, and take support of others if you are not sure about what can be done then you can take support uh, for training purpose you can take support for um understanding exactly what to be do you can also take support so that you don't feel alone and you don't get bored while doing it so these these are different ways in which you can um take support from other people some other strategies are um, just the way if you have variety in exercise that helps selecting an interesting exercise can also help so for example if you find it boring to run maybe or do cardio in the form of running but if you if you like dancing if you like music and if you go for zumba that might be interesting and the chances of you doing it regularly automatically increases um have some routine and follow that so make a schedule and be punctual about that schedule if you have decided that okay i will do it at 5 o'clock then don't uh, be lethargic towards it when you are deciding schedule only consider all the things uh, but if when you decide a time be punctual for that uh, be aware about your progress if you are marking your progress whatever it could be it doesn't have to be only in terms of uh, weight or anything if you are uh, marking your progress in terms of stamina or in terms of how you are going to do it for example if you are doing a plank and today i did it for 10 seconds next day I, now i am able to do do it hold it for 30 second so whatever is your progress marking um be aware of that because that helps us that let us know that if we we are on the right track it also helps us to know that whether we are progressing in a right direction and it gives us motivation also uh and very importantly thank yourself thank your body for uh, cooperating with you <clears throat> 
and be grateful to yourself for uh, able to do these kind of exercises so these are some strategies can be helpful when it comes to um, maintaining regularity and uh, enhancing the adherence uh, to the exercise whether it is for yourself or if you are working with any sports person the next concept that we are going to explore is aggression uh, aggression in sport specifically now if you see aggression it's mostly looked upon as a negative characteristic we say that that person is very aggressive or uh, there's too much aggression in that group uh, however when it comes to sports it can be looked upon little differently some psychologists agree that it can enhance sports uh, performance and um, it can come from different sources also and it depends on what source uh, from where your aggression is getting so before that let's first understand what is the meaning of aggression so again with other concepts also different psychologists have defined uh, aggression in different ways and uh, but the most popular uh, definition of aggression in terms of sports is given by baron and richardson and they have defined aggression as a behavior with a goal of harming or injuring another living being who is motivated to avoid such treatment so basically there are there is a it's a behavior it's a action uh, there is a goal so intention is looked upon there is the intention is to harm other person and the other person who is motivated to avoid such treatments means it's it's uh, the aggression is shown on a person who is maybe passive and who is not intended to be participated in the aggression uh now other the psychologist called berkowitz he had mentioned two factors that are required to classify a behavior as showing aggression the first one is the behavior must be directed towards another person with the goal of causing some form of harm um so the intention has to be to harm or injure other person then the behavior can be called as aggression and the second uh, criteria is that the behavior must show a reasonable expectation that the attempt to inflict harm will be successful so it's not like there is just intention the uh, person who is aggressive also wants to be like it's almost like that person wants to make sure that the other person is harmed um, so these are the two uh, classifying criteria that berkowitz has mentioned about the uh, aggression and similarly as i mentioned in other subtopics also you can read and um, understand the other definitions also of uh, aggression now aggression um, has three types in sports so, uh, one is hostile second is instrumental and third is assertive so the hostile aggression is uh, basically causes physical or psychological harm to the other person and uh, in this intention is basically to ca cause harm so for example if uh, some player in in cricket if some player is uh, purposely throwing ball uh, very harshly or in a very high speed so that to harm the uh, the batsman uh, that can come under a hostile aggression so here the intention is to actually harm that person uh, and this kind of aggression does cause physical or psychological harm and the second one uh, second part of the aggression is called uh, instrumental aggression so in this form of aggression uh, the person uses aggression to reach goal uh, and the intention is not to hurt someone but uh, intention from that hurt or from that harm you want to achieve a goal for example if it's a boxing kind of a game where you are in a way harming other person and you want to harm other person but you don't want to harm that person so that Uh, to cause harm to that person but you want to harm that person so that you can win the game right uh, so uh, whatever aggression you are using it's uh, you are harming the other person but that's not the main intention the main intention is to achieve something from that harm so that can come under the instrumental aggression <clears throat> and the last uh, part is assertive aggression so uh, assertive aggression means using legitimate physical or verbal force so uh, kind of similar to instrumental you use your physical or verbal force uh, so that 
इट इज़ अगेन हेल्पिंग यू टू अचीव योर गोल और इन इन असर्टिव द इंटेंशन इज़ मोर ऑफ अ टू एस्टैब्लिश डोमिनेंस सो इफ यू हैव हर्ड अबाउट when someone say that uh, when someone passes comments or when someone says something uh, or you try to distract the other person so that time uh, you want to show that i am capable or i am more powerful than you and you want to demoralize the other person or the other team uh, so that is a assertive uh, aggression but here you are not uh, breaking any rule or you are not uh, causing any uh, pain to the other person you are using some legitimate force uh, without any breaking any rules and the intention is to establish your uh dominance so these are the three types uh, which are mentioned uh, when it comes to aggression in sports